theta. Sorry? Yeah. Mm, so, yes. Mm -hmm. But then capital M C squared approaches zero, C squared is constant. Mm -hmm. Then capital M approaches zero. So you know capital M approaching infinity as well as approaching zero. Uh, that's a very good question. The, uh, the author uh, does not provide reason for this, even though logically this should approach infinity. This is why he manipulates it this way in order to make this approach zero. So we have 1 minus C cosine alpha over V sine theta, and 1 plus cosine beta over sine theta. Could have sworn this is supposed to be C and this is supposed to be V, but I'm going to let that go. And this is equal to F prime. Now we also have the idea that F times sine alpha over sine beta is equal to F prime. So then we get that 1 minus C cosine alpha over V sine theta divided by 1 plus cosine beta over sine theta is equal to sine alpha over sine beta. Now from this relation, uh, using the trigonometric identities for sine addition, so sine alpha plus beta and sine alpha plus sine beta, Uh, the author eventually obtains, I believe, beta is equal to 2 arctan. Let me see if I can remember this correctly. 1 minus v over c sine alpha over 1 plus v over c, no, sine theta over 1 plus v over c sine theta. times tan of alpha over 2. And this reduces, if v is equal to 0, to Euclid's, the normal Euclidean reflection. If we set v equals 0, we get beta equals 2 arctan, 1 over 1 tan alpha over 2. Which just gives beta equals 2 times alpha over 2 or alpha. So, uh, the author uh, considers that he makes some very strange assumptions uh, at the end, saying that uh, if we assume that mass approaches infinity, then the entire point of solar sailing is moot because. Uh, the solar sail uh, essentially cannot move. Uh, but this is a good approximation for the motion of solar sails uh, in a system. So, uh, the author doesn't consider the gravitational effects in the, uh, in the paper, but uh, this could be used to essentially uh, create gravitational maneuvers uh, uh, and apply various forces over time to the solar sail by rotating it at different angles. And of course this theory has already been tested because there have been three successful solar sail launches uh, since 2007. So, uh, right, this formula is basically uh, the center of the entire talk and uh, that's what I wanted to derive. Uh, the, still the big thing uh, that I really don't like about this is this manipulation, but essentially since the numerator should now be still be approaching infinity, this just does not make sense according to every concept of a limit, but I mean, I'm still going with the paper here. So, and it does uh, surprisingly align 
with the earlier conclusions of George Kanofsky, which is a Russian physicist who studied this from 2004 to 2012, and for the original starting cases of Einstein, who studied this all the way back in the 1930s. So, uh, I mean, it surprisingly works, uh, which is, I mean, oh, and he just adds a negative to this formula uh, because it uh, followed the experimental uh, requirements. So, or rather, he added a negative because it followed all the past data, not because of any real reason. So, uh, that is essentially how we can control the motion of solar sails uh, in, uh, in, okay, so this is how we can control the force applied to solar sails through radiation pressure, uh, and how the velocity of it depends on uh, the angle that it is tilted at uh, over time, with several assumptions, like the light is hitting it at the center of mass, and that the mass is essentially infinite. So hopefully this is a good approximation going forward, and hopefully someone is brave enough to do it without assuming that m is approaching infinity. So, yeah, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I think, uh, what do you can see the board? I think we should take a picture of this uh, with him. It's amazing to look at the entire algebra that he does on the board without a single page of anything that he's at. Even when we teach in the class, we sometimes have these kind of notes over there, and then we try to do this stuff. So you remember, and you uh, you know control each and every part of it, and you have done that thing so nicely. Yeah, there are several things that you have to really look into again back to the papers and other papers as well, because I know this concept has been heavily used also for the you know laser propulsions of the jets. You know, I remember long back when I was in US, so we were discussing about all the stuff that can we utilize these photons to really propel some kind of a heavy object like Mars when it's infinity or something like that. So I think if you have any questions or comments, please make it before we close down this session. Uh, any comments? Yes, please. I would really like he's different from all of us. Yes, absolutely. I would like to know a little bit about yourself. So I'm more focused on math as a parent because I made this mistake. I'm pretty sure in the actual paper there is a C over V right here. I mean to say that you are only 11 year olds, right? So how did you how did you I, I come up with this idea of lighting the mathematics? Students of your age playing soccer, not in front of the board and not teaching us. So how you work here? I think. I'm curious. We are all curious. Uh, just through learning, I was mostly inspired by my dad because uh, he used to be a grad student in math at Columbia. Um, but do you do anything else other than this? Uh, a little bit, but um, math is my main passion. No, any, any other things other than the academics? Like you, you like some other things, like you know, football, you know, soccer, or any other, you know, real American football. Well, when you're playing with 11th and 12th graders, usually, mm -hmm. uh, football and uh, tennis and all those other sports. Really? become really? a lot less fun because you're always being beaten. Ah, uh, all right, all right. So that's the problem. That's the problem. Good answer. You know, very, very good answer. But that's the problem with us. You know, anyway, <laughs> you get it. What is status you are in? What are you doing with me now? Yes, yeah, so he's in class 12. So he's doing 12 class. He's actually applying for the undergraduate program. He's also the visiting undergraduates. Okay. And the college he's trying to enter now. Because he can now, you know, skip all the classes which his uh, you know, high school has allowed to do this. How many hours do you put in uh, these kinds of things in, uh, in uh, This lecture today? No, I no, I'm not talking in general. How many hours do you study for these kinds of things every day? Uh, well, for regular lectures, I usually don't go into this um, much depth. So I usually study for them around, uh, well, not uh, 20 hours a day, but like two or three hours a day for a week or so. And that you remember each and every time of it. I mean, that's something very, very amazing to us. You know, we are teaching all the time on the board, but often we forget different, you know, steps that you have to go back to the notes or books or something like that, or, or the paper, let's say. This is great.
great to see that you, you are both working. Yes, please. Uh, what do you aspire to be in the future? Like what do you want to do? Uh, hopefully, be a math professor. Uh, I know that my teaching hasn't been that clear, especially because of my handwriting. Other than teaching, you want to do research or anything? Any any problem you want to solve? Any? Probably small research. Uh, the problems I want to solve, a lot of the problems from today will probably still be unsolved by the time I fully mathematically mature, and a lot of new problems will probably open up by that time. Sure. Great. Thank you very much for coming here and doing this fantastic talk. So you should take a picture, you have taken the picture? Okay, good, good, no problem.